What's going on everyone? Welcome to Cartoon Season. I'm Tyler, as always, and this is where we get to talk about some animation. Whether it be cartoons or anime, whether it be movies or shows, pretty much everything, you know what I'm saying? And today, we're of course doing Hotel Transylvania. Um, this was a movie for me that, um, when I watched it again for this episode, second time I've seen it, I'm pretty sure only second time, and I don't remember, like, loving it the first time, and then you, like, blink, <laughs> and then now there's four of them, you know, it's like, hmm, well, people, people really must have liked this, huh, so it, it, it was fun to revisit it, um, you know, this not, again, like, not being one where I'm, like, like, I don't think of Hotel Transylvania as, like, one of my favorite movies, I mean, even, like, as of late, you know, um, but, I mean, it's, 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 it's surprisingly good, honestly, it has a good cast of characters, I mean, it has a pretty, like, nice and charming story, um, the humor is there, so, um, and today I'm just gonna talk about, you know, only a couple things, I wanna get into the Mavis and Jonathan relationship, I think they handled that very well, and very, again, very, very charming, um, and then I wanna get into Dracula's old way of thinking, and how that really, I mean, really dictated the film like i mean that pretty much was the plot of the film almost um was all because of his old way of thinking um so yeah <laughs> before we get into that just make sure to go to the tiger t youtube and as well as any other many many other podcast services get more episodes of this um also i got a tiger t twitter and uh, another personal twitter so if that, that's if that's your thing you know um, what did, what did I tweet out the other day? <laughs> I don't know, something. Um, anyway. So yeah, we're gonna get into the Mavis and Jonathan relationship, alright? I, I love it whenever there is some sort of romance on into anything. All for it. I'm, I'm always all for it, you know? Um, and so this one we got Mavis and Jonathan. These are, these are two nice characters, you know? I think the note I wrote here was, th they're, they're just two nice people who are ignorant to each other's worlds, you know? So we got Jonathan, who's a human, who kind of, kind of more just like a carefree human, you know, he, he traveled here, um, despite all the warnings and he traveled here alone, you know, um, and he's just trying to chill. That's really all it is. And then you got Mavis who is, you know, she was, uh, she was secluded her whole life. You know, she doesn't really know what the outside world is. She's always had dreams about it and you know, wanting to be out on her own, she even has that little postcard of like, uh, what, what was it, like paradise <laughs> or something, it's like, no, 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 it's not, it's not a real place, I mean, it is a real place on the postcard, but like, paradise as an idea is not a real place, you're not gonna find that, um, but and again, it's all because of how she was brought up, um, and it, uh, she's a vampire, didn't, didn't mention that yet, she, she is a vampire, and, um, again, they're just ignorant to each other's worlds, like, Mavis knows nothing about the human world, Jonathan knows nothing about the monsters like again like the most Jonathan knows is probably from what he's read and Mavis probably just from what her, her dad told her um so they really don't have any reason to dislike each other um I mean again they've both probably read and been told bad things about like each other's kind but neither one of them have ever encountered each other's kind so it's more of like a, well I've read this but what do y'all really like and they don't know until they meet each other. So again, ignorance. Um, it's great because John does not care at all that they're all monsters. Like he doesn't really get freaked out. Um, I mean, he does get freaked out, but it's more of like an excited freak out where it's like, oh, this is great. And you're actually Dracula and you're actually Frankenstein and, you know, all, all that stuff. So it's again, it's it's very like it's very much a like childlike wonder <laughs> that he has. Like, oh, these, these, these are the monsters, I'm going to talk to them, and we're going to learn more about them. And is this true? Is that true? You know, it's it's awesome. Um, and then on the Mavis side, Mavis does not care that he's human. Now, this doesn't come until much later. You know, she is told for most of the film that he is related to Frankenstein. But even at the end, when uh, he's found out, and it's out, ousted, right? Ousted? that he is a human and everyone starts freaking out because uh, obviously Dracula told them all that humans are evil. Um, she doesn't care. Like, like she doesn't even flinch. She's just like, ah, oh, 
weird, but I've I've known you for this you know small amount of time. But like you, I mean, I feel like if you were gonna do something bad, you probably would've done it by now. I feel like if you're gonna bring an army of humans, probably would've done it by now. So again, like even though she now finds out, oh, he is a human, and now all of like the propaganda <laughs> that her dad has fed her her entire life comes rushing to her brain. She doesn't immediately reject him. She just says, well, you must be different then because that's not true about you. Like you haven't tried to, to harm me or anyone else here the whole time. I've the whole time I've seen you. So, you know, doesn't matter what I've been told from what I've actually seen, you know, right? Seeing is believing, right? I have no reason to resent you, you know, um, and then Mavis even protects him from her dad. You know, it's also a nice little thing where, you know, Mavis obviously knows that, um, that, you know, like, again, before the human thing, Mavis knows that the dad is super protective of her. And so he may not like that, um, you know, they're, they're, they're hanging out too much, even though one of the lies he told was that he wanted, you know, Jonathan, the family Frankenstein friend to be here because it's similar ages. They're similar ages, you know, um, but, you know, but even so, he is overprotective. I mean, you can just see that from how she was raised. And again, the propaganda. <laughs> but like, I mean, it's also like a dad, right? Like a dad, daughter. That's always how it is. Um, and so she like makes sure that, you know, because obviously throughout the film, he is, you know, it seems like he's trying to get rid of him almost. Um, and so Mavis is like, no, <laughs> no, he's like, a, he's a friend and I want to, I want to be with him and I want to hang out. And, you know, from what we've done so far, he's, you know, we've had fun. Um, and then at the very end, it's amazing. They confess to each other at the end and they kiss and it's great. It's a great ending. Um, you know, cause there was a whole thing where like they knew they liked each other, but then, um, then like the whole like human thing. And so she even said like, I don't care. We, we can do this. And then from what Jonathan thought was the right thing to do, especially in front of Dracula, he like pushed her away. I was like, nah, but then at the end they came around when everything was all kosher and he was like, nah, like you were my um oh, what was the what was the term my my like uh my my uh, like ding or something wasn't it something like that like, like the, that was what the mom was talking about of like at at some point you will find your your ding i think i think it is and and it's basically like in like a like an automatopoeia it's like, ah, oh, like, like you, you see someone in the eyes the first time you see him. It's like love at first sight, basically. Um, and so he confesses to her. He's like, nah, like you're, you're mine as well. You know, like you, you confess this to me earlier. I'm telling you right now that the feeling is mutual. Um, and it's great. It's awesome. Um, yeah, just, uh, that's kind of it with that. Um, the relationship is nice. I just wanted to point it out because I think that's something that, especially in animated movies, um, a lot of the time they have relationships you know especially like young young love and i don't think they always nail it i think it's always like too too idealistic um whereas with this relationship i think while yeah i mean i'm sure in real life like a monster and a human you know like a like a movie monster and a human they wouldn't get together immediately even if they are young like this you know the ignorance i don't think would be that strong but still i think that them still fighting for each other and them being kids and them wanting to, and them not knowing and them wanting to learn off of each other because that's the best way to learn um and then just through experience they're like well there's no reason for us to hate each other in fact we really like each other like that's that's great to me you know it's even though technically it was love at first sight and that is somewhat unrealistic i think they do a really good job of like making it like making us care about the relationship and, and, and actually making us believe that they like each other. Um, and then for it to pay off in the end in a way that's nice, you know, and, and not like them being married in the end. You know, I think that that's like an easy, like, even if it wasn't really what's going to happen, I think that would be an easy joke to tell. Like, oh, now they're going to get, you know, when's the wedding? But like, they're just like, oh, we're, we're, we're just together. You know, because we, we really are like, we took like the more of like the, the like best friends route to a connection rather than like dating i guess right um yeah and then the other thing i want to talk about was dracula's old way of thinking um 
the hotel exists because humans are evil, right? That's that, that, that that's the whole beginning. The name of the movie Hotel Transylvania. This exists because Dracula believes all humans are evil, and they we need to build a hotel so all the all the monsters can stay and get you know stay away from humans. It is a safe place for monsters to be for us to all hang out and do stuff, celebrate be with our own kind all that stuff not a bad thing but i think that obviously the the motivations behind it are just incorrect you know um dracula shows an old film which paints humans in a bad light i mean he literally has like he brought like the the, like projector (laughs) that like we used to use i don't think they use them anymore really i think like in school i think it's more like smart boards and stuff um very big deal when our when our school in elementary school got smart boards big deal um but yeah i mean like elementary school even middle school i mean i don't think high school did anyone have like the projectors that we use i'm trying to think i don't believe so i think by that point it was pretty much all smart boards or people just use like chalk like they're like, whatever chalk we'll just do that um also a really weird thing too for like people like teachers to get smart boards and they just use them as a projector like they don't actually use the smart board for its capabilities you know very weird um but anyway these are the old like bust out the old projector with like like a film <laughs> you know and uh just looks like black and white you know film that i was like ah oh, humans will kill you you know not true well probably true but you don't know that that i mean Dr- dracula has no proof that that's actually what it would be like today at this point you know He's just going off those old ideals as if nothing could ever change. Um, Then he built a small town to scar his daughter. Terrible. Awful. (laughs) You know. um, I mean, didn't have to do that. But again, because of his old way of thinking, he believed that all humans are evil and that Mavis, his daughter, shouldn't go out into the real world. You know, she really wants to. And it's kind of your own fault for basically keeping her locked up her whole life um you know not even wanting her to step outside of the door um you know let alone go off to another city or another town or whatever um and so he built a town with like the zombies and all that that dressed up as humans and wanted to scar her into being like oh no what everything i said is true which even that to me makes me believe that even at this point in the film he is unsure about himself you know, because like, I, mean, I guess he didn't want it to be any real danger. So he made this fake danger. But even that, it's like, you know what you did was wrong. You know that you could be wrong in, in, in this in this whole thing. But, you know, being a dad, you want to protect your daughter. It makes sense. Even though I, you know, I believe it's wrong. Um, and then he tried his hardest to discreetly remove Jonathan um, and, and that was probably really tough for him because it was kind of bouncing between two different things where it was like, well, I need to get him, get him out of here because he's a human and he's dangerous and I don't want him to hurt anyone, including my daughter, but I also don't want to hurt her feelings because now I've had to lie to her as to who he is and why he's here without telling, saying he's human because I can't say he's human because if I do, people will find out and freak out. So it's a very thin line he had to walk there. Um, and he's blind to how Mavis feels about John, um, which is crazy to me. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, again, it's because he's human. You know, I, I think him being a dad, I think he wants to protect his daughter and he's like, never, never be romantic with anyone, (laughs) you know? But, um, you know, I, it, it's just tough because like, you know, I guess we're watching a movie, so we have, we can look at it from the outside looking in, but it's like could just give him a chance like even like you meeting him for the first time i feel like you can tell from right there that he's not evil (laughs) you know and like the way he talks the way he acts the way he walks like come on like you can at least look at him and tell these things um but i mean the 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 crux of all this is because his wife was killed by humans you know i mean that's that's why you know he didn't really ever have an issue with humans until that until his wife was killed by them which rightfully so not rightfully so that she was killed but rightfully so that he would now have this deep-seated anger towards humans you know 
not necessarily wanted to go out and just kill all humans, but being in a position where he's like, I'm never going to go towards them again. My daughter's never going to. All my friends, everyone I know, I'm going to keep them away because I want to protect them. I don't want them to go out and lose their life or lose a loved one's life. So again, I, I don't think Drac is a bad person or a bad monster, but like, I think it's also okay to like come up for air every so often and try to reevaluate the world around you because you know i mean even if you're looking on youtube i have a i have a, an image up um of of, of dracula a, a, a screenshot of the film and it is him being angry and suspicious at jonathan's phone at his smartphone he doesn't even know what this is you know what i mean so e even that you know, I, you know i think smartphones are a very easy way <laughs> in like comedic films to to you know to kind of get that point across that the person who's holding them and is mad at them is confused by them it's because they're old you know i you know i don't think that's a very like clever way to show that anymore but it is you know it works here because it's just further showing how out of touch he is so if you're out of touch with technology imagine how out of touch you are with how the world works and yes obviously we know there's bad people in the world there's maybe even evil people in the world but to think that nobody you know even if it is a minority of the population to think that nobody would accept you for who you are you know is is, is i don't know it's it's small-minded um and you know eventually john's new ideas do win over dracula like even just with the party um you know the different fresh ideas you know like they want to do like charades with like a thousand people and it's like we we do not care <laughs> you know like John's coming in being like, here's all this new fun stuff that I want to do. And it goes against Dracula. Dracula gets very upset, but part way through the film and you see him kind of peeling away at his character, we see that Dracula starts to accept them and be like, oh, these are fun. Oh, these are new. Like he, he starts to accept new ideas, even if it is something as trivial as like, uh, you know, doing, doing like cannonballs into the pool rather than just swimming, you know, um, I think even that is, you know, those, those small victories is what adds up to the big victory in the end of him accepting not only John, but, you know, accepting help, and, uh, you know, from humans. Um, and then with the help of humans, like I said, he gets back to John, you know, like he, he, he can't really run out into the world when it's daylight out because he will fry, <laughs> he will cook, um, so with that literally with the help of humans and they're all like yeah, this is dracula like we're gonna help him we're gonna help him back you know get back to his to his friend so he can save his daughter and not, not save his daughter but you know like you know more like metaphorically save his daughter um you know and also this this dude who now has become his friend in a way that has helped him open his eyes to what the world can be not necessarily what all the world is but what you know showing him that what he thought before is not the the the, the end-all be-all basically um you know and then he approves of john and mavis which is another victory um something he would never do especially because he's human i imagine that even if he wasn't human jackley wouldn't be too keen on his only daughter <laughs> being with someone else and almost like taking time away from him but that that is the double you know kind of you know, kind of like the the like compound victory and the and and, and the compound of change that Dracula was able to have throughout the course of the film um and yeah that's that's all that there um like i said overall i think this film was pretty good i mean i don't i don't know if it's ever i don't know if it goes down as like top 10 top 20 on my personal list maybe maybe who's to say but um you know i do definitely think it's good i, I mean i definitely understand why there was sequels i don't remember any of the sequels i think the fourth one just came out i don't remember two three or four i haven't watched four um but I'll get to them eventually and I'll see how good they are because they kept spawning sequels. So either they were really good or they weren't that good, but people still watched them. You know, I mean, i.e. the uh, the Transformers movies, <laughs> you know, um, but like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited to watch them now because the first one was pretty good. And I'm, ex and I'm interested to see how they build upon this, you know, like what other stories they can tell now. I mean, because this movie had had such a tight one. You know, it, it was so like, this is, 
Dracula doesn't trust humans, so he has this hotel where he gathers monsters. And then, of course, a human comes in and through his daughter, he's able to change. So, like, what is a sequel to this movie going to look like? You know, we're going to see more humans? Are we going to... Um, is it still going to be at the hotel? I mean, it's called Hotel Transylvania. I can't imagine they move away from the hotel. Um, you know, hopefully we see more monster characters. You know, um, it, you know, can the film be changing someone else's mind? Like, I'm, I'm not sure. Like, are we ever going to meet like John's family? Is it going to do that whole switcheroo? Um, I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Um, make sure to go to tiger t youtube or any other podcast service so you can listen to more episodes of this go to tiger t twitter or my twitter um and if that, that's your thing um, also a good way to suggest other stuff feedback all that fun uh garbage <laughs> i can think of a, a better word um please go listen to my other podcast i do with my good friend raymond called untitled inner focus where we talk mostly about anime but also about video game movies books all that fun stuff that we're all into um and then that's pretty much it um you know so until next time watch hotel transylvania 2 we'll cover it sometime soon probably and uh also let me know what other movies and shows cartoons anime all that good stuff that you want me to do an episode on